What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the world's greatest webcast. This is Rock Talk Live. I'm the host, and this is Adam Ottavino. Pretty pumped to have Otto with us today. So Otto was on Intentional Talk yesterday, and I was like, hey, man, what's the chance we could get you on, uh, on my little webcast? And he was like, let's do it. This will be fun. So really excited to have Otto today. I trust that you guys know the format by now. If you have any questions for Otto, for us, any love, anything you want to send along, uh, do so in the, on the questions in the side and we'll spend 15 or so minutes. Oh boy, here we go. Always Tony Walters, throwing gum before. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't even started, it's off the rails. <laughs> so under, under this hoodie, you have your Star Wars t-shirt on, right? Yes. So that's two days in a row, you've been on large scale media broadcasts and you've had the Star Wars shirt. So I wanna know, uh, you're a big Star Wars fan, what's your favorite, uh, favorite of those movies in the trilogy or have nine of them now? What's your favorite um, one, your go-to? Obviously, uh, Empire Strikes Back is the best one. Um, and uh, I, uh, I just love Star Wars. I have all the bobbleheads in my locker, and I, uh, I represent Star Wars forever, man. So I'm going to put in a word so that we can get you on the Star Wars bobblehead next year. We, we had that. Cargo Fett, and we had X-Wing Blackman, so we need a we need an auto whatever it is. So yes. we'll see if we can get you that guy next year. Dark side auto, that's what we need. Perfect. All right, so I invented a game. Yes. Uh, Tim Howard visited, visited the club on Sunday, and we, we had a little around the chessboard we were talking about Zlatan Ibrahimovic, who's a, who's a famous uh, European soccer player. And he's pretty outspoken, has some pretty wild quotes. So I invented a game called Zlatan or Ali. So we pulled some Zlatan, Ali, uh, Zlatan Ibrahimovic quotes, and I pulled some uh, Muhammad Ali quotes. And you're going to tell me which, uh, which person said each of the following quotes. Yes. All right? Yes. All right. So I wanted to do a game show. So I'm walking in to the, from the bus today, and Blackman's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, well, we're going to play this game, and I want some sort of like game show noise. So Charlie is like, why don't you just use the ham horn, which is his favorite app of all time. So when you get one right, you're going to get the ham horn like that. It says ham. And if you get one wrong, you're going to get a sad trombone. <laughs> all right. Enough talk. We're going to get this going. Okay. All right. First quote. Let me pull up my little sheet here. Who said this? Is it Zlatan Ibrahimovic or Muhammad Ali? Quote is, I'm young, I'm handsome, I'm fast. I think, I think Ali said that one. That is correct. That was Muhammad Ali. Let's see, hold on, gotta get my ham horn. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> this, this, this is such a joke, I'm aware. All right, next quote. Who said the following quote? I'm the most recognized and loved man that ever lived because there weren't satellites when Jesus and Moses were around, so people far away in villages did not know about them. Ooh. I'll say Muhammad Ali probably said that one too. That's correct. Otto's two for two. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if we have any prizes or anything, but uh, I think you deserve it. Two for two. Let's see if you can get them all right. Yeah. Number three. Did Muhammad Ali or Zlatan Ibrahimovic say this? First I went left. He did too. Then I went right. He did too. Then he went left again, and he went to buy a hot dog. Who said that? I'm going to say Zlatan said that. That is correct. Yes. That is correct. So we're three for three. The Can't eats. stump this guy. Number four, we only have we, there's six total. So okay. if you guys find this terrible, I apologize. But uh, anyway, uh, it looks like Diana thinks it's funny. Laugh my butt off, so that's good. Prizes, we'll see what we can do. Anyway, uh, we have a couple more. Uh, the next one. I didn't injure you on purpose, you know that. If you accuse me again, I'll break both your legs, and that will be on purpose. Ooh. I don't know, maybe, maybe Ali? Does <laughs> <laughs> Zlatan threaten to break his legs? Uh, apparently. That's awesome. Apparently he did. Uh, we have a couple more. Um, who said this? At home I'm a nice guy, but I don't want the world to know. Humble people, I found, don't get very far. Was that Zlatan who said that about being humble at home, or was that... Ooh, that's a tough one. Muhammad Ali. Ali? That is correct. All right. That is correct. We got one more, and then we'll move on to something hopefully a little more productive that you guys... <laughs> All right. Stacey Chase thinks it's funny, so at least we got Stacey on, on board. All right. Last one. I can't help but laugh at how perfect I am. Oh, I know that. That's, <laughs> that's Zlatan who said that. <laughs> that is. Yes. That's a classic. All right, so five for six. Pretty solid. Well done, Otto. Very impressive. I cannot help but laugh how perfect I am. <laughs> exactly. That's a classic. <laughs>
All right, so moving along, uh, I am going to ask another one, and then we'll get to some of your questions here as well. Um, Otto, you're a big, uh, big Beastie Boys fan, a Brooklyn guy. Yep. So the Beastie Boys members are Mike D, MCA, and Ad Rock. Yes. So if you were in the Beastie Boys, what would your, uh, what would your kind of nickname be? Ooh. Man. I think Man. when I asked you about your professional wrestler name a while back, you said it would be the Big O. So I, don't I know guess the Big O, or I don't know, Ad Rock. I mean, like I, I can relate to that. Like, <laughs> That's true. Kind of. So. Ad Rock. I Ad Rock too. Not much of a rapper performer type but never know cool uh and do you have a favorite beastie boy song or album something that's your go-to track um i like i like uh the uh the uh paul's boutique album uh i like sabotage as the song just because it's so in your face yep. crazy and out there and like in the latest star trek movie like that song saves the day somehow which makes no sense, but at the same time, it's kind of cool. Very nice. We'll just get through some love here. Um, we have uh, this guy, Dre Robel, doesn't like us. He says, block this. No sleep till Brooklyn. Hey, buddy. You want a ball? <laughs> <laughs> you go, pal? <laughs> <laughs> More jokes here. There's Jason Mott. <laughs> Mott's, a, Mott's a, a past participant on this. Right, so, yeah, keep sending there. your love. Any questions? We, uh, Jacob... Uh, Cho Rack just says, thanks for being a great role model. Shout out to my daughter who wants baseball. So we'll see what we can do. Uh, I don't know if you're our daddy, but we'll go out there anyway. Uh, so Manny Mancias has a question about cooking, and I, I had a similar question. So you're very, you're proud of your Italian heritage. Yep. Um, are, you, are you a cook? Do you cook anything? Or, or what's like your favorite home-cooked meal, and who makes that? I, I'm good with the grill, and I'm good for breakfast. But other than that... Pretty much not, not around the kitchen. <laughs> so is it grandma, your your wife, my, your my mom and dad? My parents are both good cook, are both good cooks, uh, as well as my uh, mother-in-law. My my wife is is okay at her. She stays in her lane. Like craft mac and cheese is her specialty. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we try not to eat that, but that's her go-to. But other than that, uh, it's not really her specialty. Okay. Somebody had a question about your tats on your wrist. Yeah. Would you talk? Would you talk about that? Okay, uh, this one's like an atom. This ah. one is like my symbol, like the zero with the cross through it. Yep. Like the empty set. Then I have the three up, three down tattoo and 60 feet, six inches tattoos, which are both baseball related, obviously. And they're kind of stupid, but at the same time, it kind of like pigeonholes myself. I just told myself, like, I have these tattoos and I can't pitch bad. <laughs> Otherwise, it'll look ridiculous. So, you know, I just kind of force myself to pitch good. Through they're the subtle. They're not like biker tats. You know, little little spots here and there. So that's not, my theory. Nothing too crazy. There was a question here that I liked. Um, uh, Ryan Kramer's just asking about your slider or sliders. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of, how did you develop that over the years and kind of refine it to be one of the nastiest pitches in the game? I threw a curveball growing up, always like big curveballs, and then I would throw like sidearm curveballs that were like like big loopy sliders. And then when I was uh, in Double uh, A, my, my, nobody was swinging at my curveball, and a teammate of mine, Alan Craig, told me that it'd be better if my breaking ball looked more like a fastball, so I should just try to throw more of a slider. Start going from, start going with that, and uh, then it just developed over time, like the different variations and the way I throw it just kind of evolved, you know, as I got more experience. But uh, always had a good breaking ball, just kind of morphed it into the slider over time. Yeah. So, and morphing over time, so you were a starting pitcher, now you're a relief pitcher, kind of moved your way back in the bullpen. Um, so we're here at 3 o'clock, 3, 3.11 local time, and if all goes well, you'll pitch at 9 o'clock. So yeah. uh, talk about learning your routine, learning your body, and the things that you need to do to prepare on a daily basis, and how, yeah. how that process worked for you in the last few years. Yeah, you know, now that I've been a reliever uh, for a while, I've finally started to figure this thing out. Like, you know, you don't want to expend too much of your mental energy until you have to. So, like he says, I'm not going to, like you say, I'm not going to pitch until 9 or 10 o'clock tonight. So, I just try to save my energy as long as I can. I get some practice in during the day, but then once the game's starting, I'm just, like, stretching, doing yoga, rolling out, like, little things to stay loose. And uh, then I'll kind of look at the scouting reports one last time just to make sure uh, that I know what I'm doing when I face these guys. Then I just drink some coffee, you know, eat, make sure I'm not hungry. And by the time they tell me to get ready, uh, you know, finally awake and finally ready. Absolutely. So you got, you got the routine down now. Sarah Swanson wants to know, uh, what, what do you do for fun outside of baseball? In the off season or off days? 
course, photography is a big thing that everybody talks about. But yeah, uh, what do you take enjoy? pictures, travel a lot with my family. Uh, now I have a daughter who's 10 months, so she's going to be a lot more like able to do awesome activities this off season. So looking forward to hanging out with her and doing that. And uh, I just work out and get ready. Watch. I watch a lot of playoff baseball if we're not in it. And I'm like a baseball addict, so I'll watch all the MLB shows and everything, getting excited for the next year. For sure. Uh, one thing that, that's sort of developed in the clubhouse over the last couple months has been the chessboard. Oh, yeah. So th there's been some heated chess games going on. You're always in the thick of it. So I want to know who's who's sort of the reigning champion in the chess match? Yeah, it's been, chess it's been bouncing back and forth. I mean, our official grandmaster is our <laughs> strength, is our, one of our strength coaches, Mike Jasperson. Jasperson's good? Because he was like a Utah high school state champion. Really? So he... That's something you probably shouldn't tell people. He's but. good from a young age. <laughs> yeah. So he's like kind of our sensei, if you will. <laughs> but uh, the players, you know, Boone Logan's pretty good. He's aggressive. I, I think Scott Oberg and Bettis are both like right there in the mix for the top spot. Then I'd say I'm right under there trying to compete in that realm. And then DJ LeMay, who's like a distant like fifth, like he's the punching bag. You know, <laughs> we, like to, we like to beat up on DJ. Wow. <laughs> wow. Jordan had a question, how do you get a reverse print tee? I, I assume you're joking, but this is obviously just the mirror with the camera and everything, so they don't make these as reversed. It would um, be cool if they did. But anyway, uh, Mark had a kind of a serious question here. Mark and D. Giacomo. Uh, just talk about these young arms that we have. So yeah. being able to build a, a pitching staff with starting pitching relievers who are coming up, and now you're one of the guys who's sort of bringing them along and showing them the ropes a little bit. So just talk about the next wave of pitching that we have coming up here soon. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think that the Rockies have done a good job of uh, shifting their focus to the pitching because that's, that's really what we need to get us back into the playoffs and um, you know, hopefully win a World Series one of these years. So uh, I'm, I'm pretty pumped about it. Obviously, everybody at home seen, like, John Gray pitch, Tyler Anderson pitch. We're both essentially rookies dominating and – we have Hoffman up here now. He's like got a ton of talent. There's a lot more coming, and uh, it's just it's just cool. We have Estevez out in the bullpen throwing 100, so it's yeah. like it's exciting that we have all these guys, and we just got to mold, mold them, uh, you know, into the best versions of themselves. And that's really that's what's going to get us where we need to be. For sure, um, Puck. That's not a very nice thing to say, uh, Michael Ferguson. I would love to have beer with you. Uh, Adam cannot, but I will. I'm a I'm an adult. I'm 29 years old, so. Uh, I have a question here as well. So I, I didn't fact check this, but your dad is an actor or was an actor or had yeah. done quite a bit of acting. Um, is that anything that you ever got into as a kid, doing some, some plays or anything like that? Um, not, not really, no. I mean, I thought about it. I went out, I've been at some auditions before for things. Um, somehow one time I auditioned to be a pitcher and then I didn't get the job. So that was kind of weird. <laughs> I was like, man, I can't even get what I do. But, uh, no, I mean, not really. That's kind of his world. And uh, sure. I don't know I don't know if I'd be very good, but uh, it's cool. It's awesome. He's, he's the man, my dad. Yeah, he seems like a really cool guy. And you're, So your mom's a teacher. Yeah. And you majored in history, right, at Northeastern? Is that what I read? Yeah. Yeah, so I did my prep work. Uh, what was your what was your favorite subject when you were in school, like elementary school? Was it math? Was it English reading? Science, like always. Yeah, science, guy? science. Yeah, I'm always. I always want to know how the world works. And okay. I have a lot of curiosity when it comes to that. All right. Uh, Blake has a good question here. If you uh, if you could play another sport professionally, which would it be? Ooh. If you could be play something at that probably, level, I think probably hockey. Uh, I played hockey growing up, and I loved it. It was like so much fun playing ice hockey and. Uh, I feel like I'd be pretty good, you know, if I would have stuck with it. So uh, hockey, I, I have to say. Plus, like, it's just cool, like playing in the winter. I don't know, pro sport in the winter in the, in, in the arenas and everything. And I go to a lot of hockey games, and they have a great atmosphere. For them. So, I, Islanders or Rangers? I'm actually Islander fan. Yeah. Okay. So you're a Nets fan? Uh, yeah. Well, really, I'm a Knicks fan. Okay. Because like the Nets were in New Jersey when I was a kid. Yeah. yeah but yeah. I support the Nets now that they're in Brooklyn. Yeah, of I course. Have to. But I'm a Knicks fan, Giant fan, Islander fan. I grew up as a Yankee fan, obviously. I could care less now. I'm a Rocky right. fan. Yeah, of course. Yeah. All right, perfect. Um, last question before uh, before we get moving here. There, I don't remember who asked it, but somebody asked about your, your favorite ballparks to play in. So, of course, we're going to say Coors Field is number one. But what yeah. what, uh, what cities do you like to travel to? What ballparks do you like to throw in? Uh, just give a shout-out to some of the other cities that you like visiting in this lifestyle. I like have. the old-school stadiums, so Fenway Park in Boston, Wrigley Field, Chicago, sure. even L.A., uh, Dodger Stadium. 
I like the, the, the stadiums that I grew up watching on TV and then say that I've been out there, so those are cool. Uh, I like San Francisco. We get heckled a lot there, and I like that. I like, I like when the fans are mean. It just makes me play better, so I like that. For sure, and those bullpens in San Francisco, they're like right on top of you. Yes. They can just reach out and touch you. Has anybody ever like grabbed you or tried to throw anything at you? They haven't, gra they fans, haven't grabbed me, but you know, you get certain, uh, you know, uh, certain slurs and uh, insults. Some of them are funny. It's just cool. Yeah. All right, dude. Well, thanks so much for spending some time with us today. Hopefully, yeah. everybody thought that the uh, that these Latan or Ali game was uh, at least moderately entertaining. Uh, Puck, thanks for all your support. We really appreciate it. Uh, and everybody else, thanks for tuning in today. And uh, we'll do it again sometime. Peace out. Thanks, people.